Hi, my name is Carolina Gellin. I'm a Food 52 resident, and today we're gonna make a delicious herby mushroom stew in this wonderful all-clad D3 50th anniversary casserole dish. It's luscious, it's comforting. I'm very excited to share with you how to make this stew, so let's just get started. The first step will be roughly chopping our mushrooms. We have a variety here, but you can use pretty much any type you want. You could also use just one kind of mushroom, of course, that will take a little bit from the flavor profile of the dish, but hey, work with what you have. So I'm just gonna dump our mushrooms on here. If you see any dirt on them or anything, grab a wet paper towel and just go over them and pick that up. We're gonna prep the pan, we're gonna sear this in. I'm gonna grab some olive oil. What we're looking to do is just coat the bottom of the pan while we're chopping the mushrooms. We're looking for a rough chop, nothing fancy. I'm actually gonna cut them into four pieces. So these cremini mushrooms, I never know what to call them. Like, are they white button? Are they cremini? Just because I grew up calling them champignon because where I'm from in Romania, or mostly Eastern Europe, if you're gonna go to a grocery store, they're always gonna be labeled as champignon mushrooms, which champignon means mushroom in French, but that's just how I got used to calling them. So whenever you sear mushrooms, you dunk them in the pan, I never salt them because if you salt them, the salt will extract most of the water in the mushrooms. So instead of them searing, they're gonna end up steaming in the water coming out of the mushrooms. So it's time to fry these mushrooms in the pan. And as you can see, this pan is the perfect size to do that. I think we're only gonna fry these in a couple of batches. In a regular pan that's not as wide as this one, you would fry these in like three to five batches maybe. So that's an advantage. So we're just putting the mushrooms in the pan. Beautiful. I feel like a few more should be cool in there. And now I'm just gonna grab a spoon or a spatula or whatever you're working with and I'm just gonna evenly arrange them here in the pan. You don't wanna move them around too much. Don't stir them around, just let them get nice and golden brown on each side and then we're gonna come back and then give them a nice stir. So it's been around four to five minutes and as you can see, our mushrooms are fully cooked. Again, we didn't add any salt or anything on them. It's just mushrooms and oil. We have some beautiful, nice crispy bits that are gonna add a lot of texture and flavor to our stew and all there's left to do is scoop them on a plate, like so. And we're ready to move on to the next batch. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil to our pan. Again, you don't wanna overdo it. You just want the bottom fully covered. And now we're just gonna grab the rest of the mushrooms and just dump them right in here. Beautiful sizzle. This pan has a great heat distribution, which will help our mushrooms sear evenly on each side. So these mushrooms have been frying for about five minutes and as you can see, these mushrooms are beautiful and golden brown. You can see the color on these is amazing. We're gonna give them a toss in the pan and I'm gonna let them cook for about one to two more minutes and then we're ready to transfer them from the pan to the plate. So our mushrooms are cooked. It's time to move on to the next step, which we'll be adding more olive oil to our all-clad pan. We're using the same pan here. No need to wash it away or anything. Just leave it as it is. Those brown mushroom bits on the bottom will add much flavor to our stew, so leave them there. I'm gonna add in the shallots. And our carrot, which is finely chopped. We will be sauteing this for about five minutes until the shallots are looking nice and translucent. The fragrance of shallots in oil doesn't compare to anything. Our veg has been cooking for about five minutes. As you can see, they're almost caramelized, which is great. The carrot and the shallot are gonna add a beautiful sweetness to our mushroom stew that's gonna complement the earthy notes from the mushrooms. And now we're gonna go in with the garlic the garlic can't go in in the beginning because it's gonna burn by the time the shallots and the carrot are gonna caramelize. Uh, so we're gonna give the garlic 
about a couple more minutes in the pan and then we're gonna go in with our tomato paste. So next up, we're gonna have the tomato paste going in. You always wanna cook the tomato paste. It gets rid of that pretty sour taste tomato paste can have. So we're just gonna toast it in there for a couple more minutes. If you need to add more oil, feel free to do so. Mid sauteing. We're gonna saute these veggies for a couple more minutes. Our vegetable base here is beautifully caramelized. We're ready to add in the cooked mushrooms. Here we go. We're gonna mix them right in here. Next up, we're gonna add in the flour and we're gonna toast it a little bit. You always wanna cook down the flour that you're gonna add in a stew or anything to remove that raw flour taste. You could also use cornstarch instead if you wanna make this gluten-free, so feel free to do that. All we need in there is a thickener. Next up, we're going in with some soy. That's gonna enhance that umami mushroom flavor even further. A splash of balsamic vinegar. It's gonna add a little bit more acidity to the dish and balance out the sweetness of our caramelized vegetables. Next then we're going in with the spices. We have smoked paprika, hot paprika, and some coriander. You could use hot or sweet paprika. The level of spice in a dish is, is always up to you, so don't hesitate to modify a recipe according to your liking. And now remember, we didn't season anything yet, so add a generous amount of salt to our vegetables. Then here we have some freshly cracked black pepper going in, and we're ready for the liquids. I always like to start slow with the liquid and then just incorporate it as I go. So this pan is a three-quart all-clad pan, which is the ideal size for making a stew, in my opinion. You need a lot of liquid that's gonna end up reducing. Uh, you can use anything from vegetable stock, mushroom stock, chicken, beef, anything works in here. It's really up to you. And then that's it. Beautiful. And last but not least, we have some red wine in here. If you don't drink alcohol, you could totally substitute this with more stock. So I really hope you don't hesitate to make this if you're not a fan of wine. It's not gonna have a really strong wine taste, but the wine will add like a lot of flavor to this dish. Here it is. And now that we have all the liquids in, we wanna bring this to a boil and then simmer it for 50 to 60 minutes or until our stew becomes nice and luscious and visibly thicker in consistency. So our stew started to boil. I'm gonna lower the heat and we're gonna simmer this for 50 to 60 minutes. Halfway through, I like to place the lid on top. I slightly tilt it just to let a little bit of the steam escape. And always keep an eye on the simmering pot. You don't want it to overflow or anything. But yeah, check right back in about 30 minutes just to make sure everything's right. And this will be ready in about 50 to 60 minutes. As you can see, our stew is beautifully luscious. It has visibly thickened. We're pretty much ready to serve this lusciousness. You can pair it with pretty much anything you want from couscous, mashed potatoes, rice works really, really well, roasted vegetables. It's really up to you. It's a very versatile stew. Uh, so I have some mashed potatoes in here, the beautiful swirl. And I'm just gonna pour some of the stew right in the middle. Look at how beautiful that is. You can add a little bit more salt if you want to. I always like to extra salt my food and a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper right on top. As for the herbs, I went with some flat leaf parsley, but you could use coriander, regular parsley. It's really up to you. Dill, I think dill would work really, really well in here. Just tearing it apart and just sprinkling it all over this. And voila, look at how beautiful that is. So here is our final dish. It smells amazing. I'm very excited to try it. So let's just go for it. I'm getting some mashed potatoes, a little mushroom, and my bite. So cheers. Mm. 
it's like a hug in a bowl. It's a hug in a dish. It's so comforting. It's so warming. It's so hearty, although we don't have any meat or anything in there. It's absolutely delicious. I hope you give this recipe a go. You can find this full recipe on our Food52 website.